This is Gareth Southgate, and this is the Three Lions Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Lions Podcast. My name is Russell Osborne and I'm back with another in our series of Your First England Away Game. Thanks for all the comments on the two previous episodes released over the Easter period. First one with Adrian Bevington and the look back at Euro 2000 with Ian Dunk. Both are still available at threelionspodcast.com or your chosen podcast provider. Right. On to this episode, to a game 10 years ago in 2010. The World Cup in South Africa, to be precise. A tournament I went to and one I've got good and disappointing memories of. Uh, Leaving my wallet and passport on the plane as we landed in Pretoria and hearing my name called over the loudspeakers. Uh, Travelled with two good mates. I think I went to five games in total there. Now England had qualified top of their group ahead of Ukraine, only losing once. And they were drawn against Algeria, Slovenia and the United States, leading the Sun newspaper to put easy as their front page headline the day after the draw had been made. Easy. E for England. A Algeria. S Slovenia. Y Yanks. (laughs) Anyway, that's a couple of memories from me. Let's hear what England fan Kunal Sapat remembers as he tells us about his first England away game. And I'll tell you how you can get involved at the end of the podcast. (laughs) Welcome to the Three Lions podcast. We're back with another one of our Your First England Away Trip. And I'm very pleased to say we've got someone else on the line founder of the the Block 109 initiative at Wembley. So I'd like to welcome Kunal Sapat. Kunal, you all right? Yeah, not bad. Yourself? Yeah, all good, thank you. All good. Uh, thanks for coming on and uh, and telling us about your first away game. Kunal, you're, um, i say, one of the, the founding members of the Block 109 initiative. You're welcome to tell us a little bit more about that. And indeed, tell us a little bit more, more about your, your England history and a little bit more about yeah. yourself for people that may not know you. Yeah, so um, I am one of the founding members of Block 109. I mean, we've over the last couple of years, we've tried to get things going in home games in terms of atmosphere, the displays, banners. And I mean, we're slowly getting there. I mean, you, most people would have seen like initiatives we've been working on the last few years. But that's just the last few years. I mean, my first England game was when the Wembley St- the new Wembley Stadium first opened. Um, went to the England-Brazil game in 2007 done loads of home games since and then obviously leading on to my first away game which we're going to talk about um in South Africa about myself I mean I'm just a regular football fan I mean my clubs Chelsea I go home and away both with Chelsea and England and um I'm one of the frontline workers working in the NHS at the moment so that's that's pretty much me summed up <laughs> well I don't think summing up um, give yourself a, a huge pat on the back with regards to uh, the frontline NHS side of things. I uh, I don't envy you, but I do take my hat off to you. You deserve all the uh, all the applause, all the plaudits, and uh, and perks you may receive, um, and uh, and a huge pay rise you deserve as well. So uh, on behalf of all, uh, on behalf of everyone and England fans, thank you. Yeah, cheers, mate. So yeah, let's South Africa. Yeah, I mean, like, my first away game seems a long time ago now. Uh, it was actually 10 years ago, almost. And I don't know where the time's gone since then, to be honest. Obviously done a lot more games since. But the way my first thing in the away game came about was actually um, the World Cup in South Africa. Um, ah, yes. And, um, and I actually ended up going to England's only win at that tournament. <laughs> so I like it's to not, think... not a tournament that... Is sort of remembered particularly well, is it? Yeah, I mean, overall, that was, well, obviously the World Cup was like wasn't great for England, you know. But the one game I did go for, we did win. 
And that was the only game I went for. So maybe I should have gone there for the whole tournament. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was this was Wednesday, the 23rd of June, 2010. England won Slovenia nil. It was down in Port Elizabeth in South Africa, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, so I actually wasn't a travel club member back then. But the way it came about, um, I think about six months before the World Cup, I think me and my brother were sitting down and we thought, yeah, we want to go to the World Cup. And we were looking the best way to get tickets for England. Obviously, we weren't members then. And mm. then, obviously, we tried our luck in the FIFA general sales, you know, and we thought about doing that. But then we noticed, um, I think, one of the official travel partners, Thompson Sport or whoever it was back then, they were doing packages to the World Cup. And I think some of the packages included a ticket to a game. And that's right. what we w- went for. I mean, it was a bit on the expensive side because we only went there for like, what, five, six days. But it included England's third group game. Um, and that was the Slovenia match. So this was after um, England had drawn with with the USA and drawn with Algeria, 1-1 and 0-0. Um, so were you thinking, oh, no, are we going out there for a, uh, a like the last game potentially? Yeah, um, so what it was, um, well, that was in June, wasn't it? Yeah, so I just turned to anyone, 21. I just finished my undergraduate first degree and I'd actually gone on a lad's holiday to Malta when I was there for the first the first uh, World Cup game and then I'd come back and then I was going to South Africa for the last group game and I was thinking, watching the first two games, oh gosh, I'm going to go there and it's going to be dreadful. Like, you're like, what? <laughs> and, like <laughs> it's going to be horrible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I didn't know what to expect really um, going there. So did you go straight into Port Elizabeth? No, so um, we flew into Cape Town um, with the package. Um, and what it was, we were staying in Cape Town. We got there, we flew out on the Monday. The game was on the Wednesday, I believe. Um, so we got to Cape Town. We had all of Tuesday in Cape Town. And then the game was in Port Elizabeth. And I remember we had to get up at like 1 or 2 a.m. We had like breakfast laid on for us, especially at like 2 a.m. And then we had... Um, there were some coaches laid on for us. Like, there was two coaches. Um, I think half of us were going to the airport for, like, the chartered flight to Port Elizabeth. And then half the other lot were going on an um, eight-hour or however long it was, a coach journey to Port Elizabeth. So we we got to the airport at Cape Town. We were in Port Elizabeth quite early. We were, we were by, I think we were by the seafront in Port Elizabeth by, like, 8 a.m. And, like... We'd never done an England away game before, but then, you know, you're seeing people, all, all the bars already filling up and people putting their flags up. And as we hadn't done an away game before, you know, like this was kind of new for us, you know, like, you know, dr- drinking 8 a.m. in the morning, like gone mm-hmm. in awake. So, I mean, yeah, that was a new experience for us at that time. Um, but it was it was quite good. Yeah, it was one of the games that I, I didn't go to. I went to the, well, unfortunately, I went to the nil-nil against Algeria. But a mate of mine, uh, afterwards, he flew down to Port Elizabeth and he actually had, um, you mentioned the beach there, he actually had his accommodation down there, actually on the beach. Oh, that's that, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> they there's some sort of put up hotel or whatever it was that they'd, they'd put right on the beach. I think he actually slept on the uh, on the beach. But there was, so you say a lot of England fans all, all milling around ready for the game. Yeah, yeah, you know, people were out um, quite early, and obviously we got to Port Elizabeth really early. Um, yeah, you know, we'd, I mean, we'd been up since 2 a.m. because we had to get the flight to Port Elizabeth, and then, yeah, you know, just strolling along the beach, chilling out. But one thing I do remember from that game, because we'd booked the package to the England's last group game, but bef- and we'd booked it before the draw had been done for the groups. And regardless of the results, we were due to fly back on the Saturday. Now, if England had come top, I remember we would have missed the next game, like, you know, on, you know, because we would have been in there. And then um, because we came second, we were, well, basically we landed back on s- the Sunday morning back home and then we lost to Germany that same day. But I remember being in the ground, there was a few other people on the, that same package. Like it was, like we were winning, but then like we were checking the other score because, yeah, we're winning, that's great, we'll get through. But then we were like, oh gosh, if we come top, we're going to miss the next game. <laughs> ah, I see. Yes, that's right. So America actually came top of that group. Um, and we, although we were joined on five points with them, they, they went through top on goal scored, I think it was. Um, and if memory serves me correctly, I think they went out the next round as well. And I, I yeah. almost want to say Ghana, but I'm not 100% sure. 
sure it was. I'm sure well, Garner rings a bell for some reason. I'm sure it was Garner who knocked him out, but I'm not sure to be honest. Okay. Um, I mean, the the one big thing I remember about South Africa was the the Vuvuzelas and and that really oh, yeah. annoying noise. Did you did you experience that? Yeah, I mean, I probably bought a couple myself. I mean, I'm sure I had uh, mates back home who wanted a few, um, and <laughs> I, I probably I probably bought one just just for the sake of it because you know it was just there. And not particularly the England game, but whilst we were out in Cape Town, like we actually went to another game as well. There was another game that in the few days we were there. I think it was Netherlands against Cameroon. That was in Cape Town, and we'd managed to get tickets for that from UEFA. Um, about a month or two before we went out to South Africa. So we went there, and I remember particularly the Vuvuzela sound for that. In the ground, was it was ridiculous. Like It was deafening, like, and I'm sure it was the same for most games there. Yeah, the one thing I remember about them is that the noise, obviously, but when you actually saw someone try or playing it or making a noise for it, just the amount of spit that came out of the ends of it, it was just, oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I said it was something different, you know, something like, you know, we had an experience before. Like, but yeah, it yeah. was unique to that one club, I suppose. Oh, absolutely. So the ground, Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium, what, what do you remember of that? Because wasn't it one of the new builds that they done? Yeah, it was. Um, it was one of the new builds. Uh, it looked like a decent stadium, but I'm not sure if it's ever been used since or what's happened to that ground. But, I mean, I can't remember what the capacity was. It must have been about forty or thousand. I can't. I can't see it being much bigger than that. But I can't remember much, much else from it. But it, it was one of those. I mean, nice, like you know, new modern stadiums. I mean, you could walk from upper tier to lower tier quite easily. I think we were in the upper tier, if I remember correctly. But at the start of the match, we were walking around near the bottom and everything. So it seemed decent from what I remember. So the the game, it was a game that um, Slovenia, they only needed a point to go through. Right. Yeah, they needed a point. But yeah, it was, you know, I mean, we could have gone either way. We could have, I mean, we could have messed up like after the first two games. I wasn't too confident to start with for that game. The lineup, um, I mean, do you remember much of the lineup? Do you remember who played? Well, obviously, we remember Defoe getting the goal. Who else was it? I remember... If, I remember Joe Cole hadn't played much in that World Cup, but I do remember he did come on at some point during that game. And like, I'm, yeah, he replaced I'm sure Rooney. Rooney, yeah. yeah. Okay, Joe, yeah. Joe Cole replaced Wayne Rooney um, yeah. towards towards the end. But yeah, David James was in goal. Glenn Johnson, Ashley Cole, Stephen Gerrard was captain. Matthew Upson was there alongside John Terry, James Milner, Frank Lampard, Jermaine Defoe. Uh, Wayne Rooney, Gareth Barry, and as we mentioned Joe Cole. The other subs that came on was uh, Emil Heskey came on, actually, for Jermaine Defoe. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah, later on in the game, yeah. It was a yeah. game, obviously, you mentioned um, Defoe scored 22 minutes, and, and he, had a, he had a really good game looking back on the highlights. He had quite a few opportunities. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he had quite a few chances, and... Actually, when he did score, like uh, I think that was like a sort of a bit of a relief all round because it was just sort of. I mean, I know it was only one nil, and you know that was the only goal, but he did have chances. And when he scored, like okay, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of pressure, off, you know, of us in the sense that you know because we weren't sure where we were going. Like if Slovenia had got in and scored, where you know that things could have gone the other way. But Milner once again into all Defoe. England have the lead. Milner's cross. And Defoe just got there ahead of his marker to steer England into the lead. News of England's demise at the 2010 FIFA World Cup just might be a little premature. Defoe had the chances. He scored the goal and, well, that's what mattered in the end. So it took us through to the game against Germany in the next round. Yeah, at least least said about that one, the better. <laughs> but were there yeah. were there people there knowing or trying to arrange the the next game or, around you? Yeah, I mean, apart from us who were on, we were coming back, and there was a few other people doing the same thing. But then I remember going on the coach back to the airport after, and there was people like talking about yeah, what they're doing for the next round. Um, actually, there's another story in there with the coach after the game. Actually, so. Before the game, we'd actually been dropped off 
on a particular road near the ground. And we've been told to come back there, um, to go back to the airport. Now, after the game, we kind of got lost. We went around, we exited the ground from a different side to the main, like one of the main roads. We couldn't find the coach that we were supposed to go on. We did eventually get to the airport, but we just got on some random coach to the airport. There was loads of coaches going to the airport. It worked out all well fine in the end, but we were just running around like trying to find the coach <laughs> and it wasn't there. But going back to your question, yeah, there were other people there planning the next round. You know, some people had just basically had gone out there for the whole month and, you know, were planning as they go along, you know, for the next round and so forth. Yeah, it's, it's looking for coaches. You mentioned, mentioned the coaches there. It's always one of those ones where I've been on a coach. You come out and you're like panicking, trying to find that coach yeah. and always hoping been, you're not going to yeah, be the last one. Yeah, like we had a flight to catch, but, you know, loads of people were doing similar and you know, going to the airport. There was other buses and stuff laid on, but it's just because we, we were part of a particular coach. Like, we couldn't find it. Uh, but it didn't matter because all the coaches were going there anyway, but... You know, when you're in a panic trying to find where you have to go and everything. Uh, yes, so, yeah, know the feeling. Yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, that was a good first away trip. I mean, uh, it was a tournament, so, you know, like tournaments always good to do, but it was a new experience. We'd never watched England out of this country before. Um, and just South Africa in general, uh, you know, I think the first day we got there, we just had a walk around, but we were only there for four or five days. And like, we managed to do a lot of stuff. We did a safari, went to Table Mountain, um, met loads of other fans. Yeah, it was great. And like to see England win away from home, you know, that was that was something great. Um, sort of, I guess, where our appetite to do more England away games. When obviously since then, I've like done a lot more and been part a regular part of the travel club. And yeah, now it's just never looked back since. Really, you are quite a regular on the uh, on the England away scene, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I didn't join the England travel club immediately after South Africa. It was it was actually more prior to the Euros, I think 2014 is when I joined up the membership. So there was a gap of, of, between South Africa and, and joining up the membership. But yeah, since then, pretty much been a regular, but doing most most games since. South Africa was a good uh, start, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. That's great. Canal, thank you very much for uh, for sharing your memories of that one. England won Slovenia nil over in South Africa, uh, a tournament that I too went to as a uh, an exciting one. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thanks to Canal for his memories there of his first England away game. If, like him, you'd like to get involved, drop me a line, 3 Podcast at gmail.com or on Twitter, at 3 Podcast. Tell me all your details and we'll look about getting you on. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. Just put us in the search bar. We should come up. And if you're listening by iTunes, go on, a little five-star review always goes down well. So in the meantime, stay subscribed and stay safe. Cheers. <laughs>